Okay. All right. Well, hi everyone. My name is Laura Lowe. I'm the contracts manager for the uh, Department of Agriculture, and uh, we're here to show you how to register in WEBS for an upcoming bid opportunity. And uh, good afternoon. My name is Camilo Acosta. I'm the Japanese beetle eradication coordinator with WSDA, and we're just here to, like Laura said, uh, help you all get registered in webs and uh, know when these opportunities are are coming up in the new year. I won't be, and we won't be answering any specifics about the upcoming bid opportunities, except for they are in South Central Washington and they do involve Japanese beetle, um, the major eradication project for 2024. And further information will, of course, be given out, but we're just doing this webinar so you all can learn how to sign up and how to get all that information when it does come out. And uh, back to you, Laura. Great, thanks. Um, so I will share my screen. And this is a page on the Department of Enterprise Services website. Um, if you look up here where I've highlighted, it shows you what the link is, and it has a lot of information on how to work with the state. And the piece that we're going to work on is called uh, Register in Webs, right here in the middle of the page. And um, so I am going to pretend that I'm a business registering in Webs, and I will walk you through uh, as much of the registration process as I can do without putting a fake business into the system. So I am going to select register in webs, this link. And when you get to the screen, this is the, um, it's basically a bid system. And there's a block that says register now. So I'm going to click register now. And it wants you to closely read a lot of information and um, you may do so for time's sake. I'm just going to hit I agree and you click on the button next to I agree and then you always have to go to the next screen. And then it says by hitting OK, you say that you're OK to register. OK, so here we are at the first screen it's step one of five i'm gonna make a fake name i'm using my cousin's name sorry cousin um so here's henry holmes and you notice this little blue star any box that has a blue star you have to put information in um the email address here is super important uh, that is the email that bids notices will get sent to. So you want to make sure that's correct. Um, and before we go farther, this doesn't get used. You won't get like ads from outside businesses or anything, right? This is just so the state can let you know that bids are available. Um, so got your name, you've got your email. Um, you put in a tax ID. This is a fake tax ID. Uh, and then uh, if you have a uniform business identifier number, you add that. That's that number you get from the Department of Revenue. And then your number of employees. I put in 10, just for example. And then in this system, you always go to the bottom and you hit next. So... Here is a space where you can enter your um, information about who owns your company if you want. It's optional. Um, you can say yes or no. Um, and then uh, here's some information that is of more interest because we can actually give more points and award some contracts based on whether you're a small business, a veteran business, a women or a uh, minority owned business. So um, if you fall into any of those categories, please identify yourself. Um, 
just for argument's sake, or I will say that Henry Holmes is a small business with less than 50 employees. Um, there's a space to enter, enter certification numbers if you have those. So uh, next is a street address. I made up an address in CELA and made up the zip code. Um, it wanted a phone number. So 50, whoops, 509-332-1234. Oops, I have to. So yeah, you have to click into the next box. Or three, there we go. All right, and then again, you hit next at the bottom and it asks you if you wanna go on. And so here we go. Oh, ethnicities must total 100%. Okay. Um, so I'm going to click no on the ownership profile. Um, so I'm not identifying any particular ethnicity for my fake firm. Um, but it'll give you error messages at the top if it wants more information. Um, so then you hit next and OK. Um, add additional contacts. So if you have someone who does all your bids for you at your company, you can add their email in here. And if you want to add, you hit add. And um, let's say first name is Anna Smith. And then you would put her email address, um, put in your same address that they work at and hit save. So email is required. All right, so now I've got to make up another email. And then again, the important thing about the email is um, if your email changes or um, you have to go back into the system, and update it or else you won't get uh, notices. So that's important. OK, so here we have an extra person at the company who will get notified. And then we hit next again. Ah, And this is an important page. This is where we add uh, specific codes of opportunities so you can get notices on those codes. And um, for the Japanese beetle effort, it's all about um, applying pesticides uh, to get rid of Japanese beetles. So we have chosen three codes and they are 675-40, and we'll hit search. And you check that little box and then you hit add. So see, now you have one listed. And then we're going to add 675-45. And this is an old system. You add search, you select the box next to it, and then you hit add. And now you have two. And we have a third code, 675-54. And we'll search for that. And we'll add it. Oop, it didn't add. Let me try it again. Let's see what's going on. Maybe I did something wrong. All right. Clicked it, selected it. Then I hit add. There it is. OK, well, that's good. So I think I went too fast. So here are the commodity codes that we're looking at or Japanese beetles, uh, pesticides and chemicals. Um, that makes sense, right? These are the areas that we're working in. So if you have these three commodity codes listed, you will get any bid notices for our Japanese beetle work. And then we'll choose next again. Um, select the counties that you are willing to work. You can choose all, or you can use this little down arrow and choose, let's say, uh, Benton. Oop, this is hard. It's good to know. 
you get two at once. So Benton and then, um, oh, where are we working? We're working in Benton, Yakima, anywhere else, Camillo? Yeah, in Franklin. Okay. Oop. So I'll go back up to Franklin. Um, but then, of course, um, if your business, if you're statewide, you can certainly select all as well um, because this system will let you know any opportunities across the state from any state agency. So we'll add some specific counties. All right. And I, I'm a little reluctant to hit finish because this is a fake business, so I won't. <laughs> but um, that is exactly how you would register your business in webs so that you get notices for um, the Japanese Beetle Project. Um, have I forgotten anything, Camillo? Um, no, I think that's... That's yeah. all perfect, Laura. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think in that last step, you can only select one at a time, it looks like. That, oh, okay. So I'll add oh, Yakima. To, oh, no. You have to hold down control to select multiple. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. See, I didn't read it, <laughs> which is so me, right? Probably like a lot of people. But so there's Yakima. And then uh, scroll back up and find Franklin there. There's Franklin, we'll add Franklin, and then two show up at the top, and then uh, we wanted Benton. There's Benton, and we'll add Benton. Perfect. Okay, so if this was your business and you wanted just these three areas, then you would select those, and then hit finish, and then you are in the system. Um, trying to think uh of... What? Go ahead. Question for other people. Is email the main way vendors would receive notifications for new bid opportunities? Yes, it's always by email, which is why it's important to keep your email, uh, the both the person and the email address updated, right? Because sometimes you'll have a business email, but the, um, the person watching that email might have changed. So... Um, it's it's good to remember to go back in and, and keep it updated. Um, and the reason why it's important to register in webs is one, you get the initial bid document. Um, and then if we update it or change the dates or, you know, add more information, once you download the original bid, you also get all the updates automatically. Um, and, and that's the easiest way to get it because we don't always know who all's looked at a bid, but um, the system manages that for us and just sends the notification out to people. And again, it will not subject you to any spam or, you know, crazy ads for things that you don't want. This is strictly to get notified of bids. All right, that's perfect, Laura. Thanks a lot. Um, well, you're very welcome. I think um, for everyone that's um, signing up, if you're new to webs, just keep an eye out. Or if you're all already in webs, keep an eye out in the new year uh, in 2024 for um, bid opportunities from WSDA for uh, multiple large scale um, projects. Great. Thank you. All right. Yeah, thank you.